Hello, my name is Carlos Genatios. I am the Director of Engineering and Technology at Miami Dade College, and I will be presenting today one of our projects that is called Geographic Information System for Environmental Awareness and Community Engagement. This program has three main objectives. The first one is to develop an educational pathway. The second one is to develop technology applications for disaster reduction. And the third one is to contribute to the community engagement by being part of a strategy developed by the Miami-Dade County uh, that is called Resilient 305. For the first objective, we have created a college credit certificate on geographic information systems at Miami-Dade College. It's a 21 credit program that can also be followed by high school students because we have created, we have articulated a program with them for dual enrollment. So when the students, when they are in high school, they can, they can be part of this college career certificate with us. And once they complete the college career certificate, they can continue to obtain the associate degrees in science and information technology and continue with this educational pathway. Once they complete the associate in science and information technology, they can go on and, con and complete the Bachelor of Science and Information Technology at Miami Dade College. If they want to continue studying in these areas, they can go on to the Florida International University to pursue a graduate certificate in GIS. So this is the pathway that we, are, we have created, and it gives the students a huge opportunity learning information technology and applications in GIS, especially with environmental impacts analysis. The second objective is to develop a platform for natural disaster risk reduction that can be shared with the students and that the students will be able to share with their communities and, and well, and the, and the community see either their families or also the other students in the, the colleges. This has several phases. The first phase is to develop capacities for data capture with remote sensing, which mainly is the use of drones. The second is to create with this pick this with the data capture, we create the human models. Then we do the hazards and vulnerability analysis. First, we develop the risk analysis. And finally, we estimate the economic and social losses. I will explain you a little bit how this works. We have chosen, uh, for instance, this study area in Miami-Dade. You see the, well, this is Florida, this is my Miami, and then we have this region, which is one of the census tract, we call it census tract 21, and we have chosen this area to, to, to analyze. Where we fly our drone and we, you see the number of photos, the points that we analyze here, 1.5 million billion points to analyze this area and to raise the human models that would allow us to understand and to assess the impact of the hurricanes and flooding. We complete models like this, and the, the, those are very precise models that really let us understand what's what's going on. And we actualize all data related to the human to the human condition of the of the buildings and the, also the, the whole census track. In relation to the hazards, we we are working with the with analyze, we analyze with hurricanes and flooding, and we follow deterministic and probabilistic strategies. And in this example that I will be showing to you. We use the hurricane for a 500 year return period and the flooding for a 100 year return period. Uh, in order to analyze, to, to analyze the risks, we follow the methodologies developed by FEMA in a strategy and methodology that is called HASUS, which means has, hazards in the US. And they, the, FEMA has defined three levels of analysis. A level one, which is of easy access, but it's based on, on the public inventory available data. A second level, which allows you to improve this inventory, area in inventory, and a hazardous level three, which allows you to do a building by building evaluation. When we when we go to from the from the level one to level two, we have to go and analyze each one of the, of the regions and obtain more information related to each each building, each house, for instance. And these are this is the general data that we have to analyze, and the specific data also is shown. Here. The situation is that when we you, we have to use this data analysis and this data capturing capacities using the drones because the 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 public data is not adequate will never lead to good results. So level one that is provided by Hasus is not such a good thing. It never allows us to have good results. And here you can see the footprints that are real, realistic. We can see them here, and the difference between the ones that we can capture with the drones and the ones that are shown, that are taken into consideration 
by Hasus level one. Um, that will show you some of the differences. When you use the level one with the public inventory, FEMA considers that the exposure for the buildings in this census tract is six, well, six, $661 million. But what we have evaluated is a lot more than that, more than twice. So this shows you that the results that you, we might obtain when we expose this value is different to what we will obtain if we if expose the, the value that we have assessed ourselves. So the inventory is 2.6 times uh, higher when we do the analysis following the more precise methodologies that we use. And this leads to differences that are important. The economic losses when for, an, for a hurricane, economic losses for a 500 year hurricane, you can see the difference here. Level one is about 400, uh, 400, 400 million dollars. And when you use for level two, it's, it's a big difference of, well, of almost a billion dollars that we have as, as difference here. When we work with the flooding, the, the situation is very similar. You, this is the public inventory, and this is the improved inventory that we have assessed. The economic losses estimated with improved inventory is 1.8 times the obtained with the public inventory. When we analyze the, the debris that is generated by the hurricane winds and by the flooding, you can see also big difference as the ones we show here in this, in this picture. The debris losses improved for, with the improved inventory is about 1.5 times to um, is about one uh, what, between 1.5 and 1.9 the, the the losses that the debris generated when we use level one. This shows that we really need to develop local capacities to be able to use these models created by FEMA. The third area, the third objective of our program is to develop community engagement. And the main way would, that we have followed this is by being part of a network that has been created by the Miami Dade County and includes municipalities, community organizations, and public schools. Here with Miami-Dade College with this program, we are very are active members of the Resilient 305 strategy. This is a strategic program for resiliency that has been led by the Office of Resiliency of Miami-Dade, and it includes the, the, also the offices of resilience of Miami Beach and the city of Miami, and also the universities, not only Miami Dade College, but also the Florida International University and the University of Miami. This is a very active network. And this project, GSEC, has allowed us to be active and to be to propose solutions and to help the development of this, this resiliency strategy. GSEC contributes to several outcomes of the Resilient 305. We support natural disaster preparedness, we help students and people understand resilience. It expedites disaster recovery, gives up a capacity for that. And also to improve the housing quality. When people understand the risk that they have, they're suffering, they can take this as a, as a reference. And also to reduce the impact of the sea level rise and coastal and stormwater flooded impacts. The conclusions of our program at this stage, in the present stage, would be with that we have created an academic pathway that supports community. Um, we are, have developed accurate, accurate risk analysis procedures um, because the available data for, of, of public sources is not always accurate. And we have been able to improve the data of the target zone. We obtain results of losses and risk of around twice the results generated by the models that use public data. This is all folks. Thank you very much. And I really want to help uh, to thank the Public Interest Technology University Network, because it's been their support that has allowed us to develop this program. Thank you very much.